see you. I'm back. I'm back. I like your shirt. I survived, thank you. Brand new, obviously. So is this like how it was? This was not how it was. <laughs> this is not how it was. I wish I had this big tent. This was uh, would have been a uh, savior, but no. So cue the fire. <laughs> We're here in the camping section of L.L. Bean with James, my partner in crime here, who's back in one piece. Finally. Um, but we're here at the camping section at L.L. Bean because that's basically why you went to Kilimanjaro to test the new prototype that you guys have been working on yeah. for quite some time. Yeah, it's part of a, a bigger collab that we've talked about already in the past, but this is hopefully a, a you know, a, a step up and, um, in, a, in another design that's really technical and and uh, and a bit more for that everyday adventure, a, a quick day hike, or um, you know, perfect for traveling. So we're excited. It, if it survived Kilimanjaro, then I think it <laughs> we survived can say. seven days of about every single condition that you can be thrown at a pack, which is exactly why two main companies went halfway around the world to test the bag. So you're testing not only the bag, but and I haven't seen him since he got back, but I did see a few pictures yep. and videos on Instagram. It tested your human spirit. It was, I, w I wasn't expecting, I mean, I knew it was going to be hard. It's the world's highest freestanding mountain. And um, 19,341 feet, it's significantly higher than anything. I've, I mean, Katahdin's a mile high, right? So just over 5,000 feet. Um, I wasn't expecting the emotional t like turmoil it was going to put on all of us. And I think that's what was, you know, there's a, there's a scene of me at the, at the, at the summit and it's, it's just waterworks, right? We're all completely crying because we were overworked, we were overtired. And the, the only words I could get out were I'm just so proud of the team. And because I saw how hard everyone fought, you know, um, Bag performed really well, right? And I'll never forget that and it's a really cool story. But seeing my friends and Flowfold and LLB and ambassadors go through what they did and get to the top was really special. Would you do it again? Would I do it again? Yes. Yes, I would absolutely do it again. I, I think uh, outside, of, outside of the summit day, it was sort of as predicted. You know, we, we did our research, the team did our research, and we went and prepared. We had all of our gear. Some day you can't you couldn't prepare for. We were told by our guides that uh, that on some day it was the worst conditions they've seen in over 250 summit attempts in seven and nine years. So we we woke up and what was supposed to take us six hours to get to the summit ended up taking us well over ten and a half hours. So we battled through um, 30 mile per hour gusts of wind. On the way up, it was so cold that my toe warmers had basically frozen inside my boots and were working against me at this point. I had never been so cold. I was bone chilling cold, and we all were. And uh, the climber, we had three climbers who were experiencing some serious symptoms of AMS, which is acute mountain syndrome, basically high altitude sickness. And they were pushing through pain and turmoil that that I, I simply can't express but uh, that like I had never seen before and it was overwhelming it was heartbreaking and um, heartwarming at the same time because I got to see our porters and our guides support the group as we went up um, so we ended up getting there we, we one person did have to turn back due to some serious sickness we ended up getting there it was way too late in the day and so we had to, we took some quick pictures. We had L.O. Bean um, and, and Flowfold flags and we took some pictures and we, we had our moment. And then we had to get off that mountain fast, but we couldn't. There was a fresh coat of about two feet of snow on the ground. Um, and then the sun came out and created this weird sort of hazy day that I've never seen before and will never likely see again. And the, the amount of heat was so extreme. So I went from, extreme cold, cold than I've ever been, to as hot as I've ever been. In no real way, all I had was my cold, all we had, any of us had was our cold weather gear on. So we baked, six hours down, we completely baked in these wow. conditions. We all came back with blistered lips, uh, burned faces, peeling. We were not the most attractive group of ambassadors I on our way back. saw pictures, but it was the real deal. <laughs> it was the real deal. So we felt we felt like like Everest explorers. And that's I, I think I think that's the only positive takeaway is that we certainly did not come out looking like we went to a salon. That is, uh, <laughs> we were we were battered. Well, I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Glad you're back. I'm glad I'm back too. I missed exploring Maine. So um, on to our next adventure. On to the next adventure. And this is why he's my co-host my friends <laughs> so good job all right thank you <laughs>
Chill, chill, chill.